You guys ask for it, you ask, you shall receive. And so we have a St. Augustine driving tour. Right behind me is the Bridge of Lions. Just keep in mind guys, I'm not an expert on the area and I don't know every single historical fact, but I'll take you guys through a ride along. So let's go for a drive. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cross the Bridge of Lions over onto the mainland into downtown St. Augustine. So a lot of people might not realize that this island over here that I'm coming from is called St. Augustine Beach. And so it's kind of like Miami where you have the mainland and then you have to cross a bridge to go over to the island of the beach. But this St. Augustine Beach Island is huge, really. It's much larger than Miami Beach. And that's where the house that I'm staying at is located. And it's actually the area I was looking at because obviously you guys know that I love the beach. So I would like to be a little closer to the beach. But I found some nice areas in the downtown area or near the downtown area as well. But really to buy anything in the downtown historical district, you're getting like a super old house and a lot of them are like two, two, two stories and I really don't like that. I don't like two-story houses. If I were to buy something like that, it would be more for investment, but I don't really want to live in a two-story house. And obviously, like I said, they're pretty old and smaller. The layouts are kind of weird because, you know, they just built things differently back in those days than they do now. And you see, we're stuck in traffic. So anybody who thinks that there's no traffic in St. Augustine because it's a small town, that's just not true, guys. I drove over here yesterday it was the same deal. This is like the only drawbridge in town and it opens I think twice an hour. And on top of that, you're going into the most popular part of the city in this direction and it gets crowded. Yesterday, when I was driving through, you wouldn't believe the amount of people waiting outside at the restaurants and things like that, trying to get a table. And you know, just like a normal Wednesday afternoon. You know, it wasn't a holiday, it wasn't the weekend, nothing special, just a regular day. So I was pretty surprised by that. So I'm gonna do my best to give you guys a little tour through the area. But like I said in the beginning, I'm not a history expert and I'm not an expert on the area. I just like it here. I've been here once before, spent a few days here and really liked it. So now I'm back. But this time I'm sharing it with you guys because back then I didn't have the YouTube channel yet. So what we'll do is we'll kind of like make a little loop around the city. We'll go a little south and then we'll kind of pass through the neighborhoods up through the north end of the historic district and then uh, that'll be the end. Straight ahead you can see the trolley going by. If you want to know about the history of St. Augustine, that's what you want to do. You want to take that trolley because they give you a ton of cool facts. They take you all around where we're going to be driving right now to show you what's in the area. And they talk a lot about the history of why this is here and why that's there. I mean, a lot of people don't know, but this is the oldest city in the entire country. And so there's a lot of history here. But... We're probably going to be doing a lot of stopping and going because there's a lot of little stoplights and stop signs and one-way streets and things like that here. You got to keep in mind, this city was built in the 1500s, right? So this wasn't set up to handle modern day traffic, kind of like those little cities in Europe. Straight ahead, you can see the Flagler College a little bit, which we'll, we'll pass by it later. But originally, when I was looking at moving to this area, I kind of wanted to be walking distance to this little area here. But obviously, that's pretty much the most expensive type of house you can buy here, because everybody wants to be walking distance to this. And now, just two years later, it's becoming almost unaffordable here. And I'm really surprised by how much the houses have increased in price in just the last two years. And I think St. Augustine is one of those areas that's just having that 
boom market right now you know the inventory for sale here is very low and the demand is extremely high and I think I might have screwed myself over because I made the 10 best places to live in Florida video and St. Augustine was the top pick and now that video has over 160,000 views and probably almost everybody that saw that video probably wants to move here so thanks to myself probably it's not an, not affordable anymore <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not I'm just joking around see I remember over here is the marina we did a little boat tour over here from this marina the last time we were here it was really cool I highly recommend you come over here and do it you pick it up right from the dock over here and then you got a few little waterfront hotels and stuff like this over here which of course are the most expensive places to stay in and I'm really happy we decided to stay in the house across the bridge and we got the whole place to ourselves for cheaper than what it would cost to stay in one of these little rinky dink hotels so that was a good call and it was Lizzie's birthday so I'm sure she was really happy about that I'm trying to just go by memory here I remember that this little street down here there was something special about it I remember the train took us down this way before oh yeah the oldest house the oldest house in st. Augustine right over there on the right hand side very historical little spot and then the train wraps right through this little alleyway there which I don't know how those guys do it These guys are magicians at driving that thing but you can see by coming through this area just how old all of these houses and hotels are I mean this hotel is from 1791 I mean you got pirates that were staying here basically but I kind of like I mean you would think that this is like something you would see in Disney World you know like it's fake but this is real you know this is a real place in the world and not only is the history super cool but the area itself is just really cute and the vibe here is is just awesome you know you have a nice mix of young people and old people here and the area is very vibrant you can it just it just feels like it's bursting with energy when you're here really some people say it's haunted I don't believe in all that if you do no disrespect to you but um, you know I haven't seen a ghost here yet I never actually drove down this little part of the island here and I know that it goes kind of like all the way down to this southern area and then it kind of wraps back around and that's what we'll do the other thing is like with all these little old houses it's like they're you know not all of them are really that nice guys because you know I don't know about you but I don't want to live in a house that's like two bedrooms one bathroom you know that's not really convenient even the condo that we live in is you know bigger than that and has an extra bathroom when guests come over and stuff like that so to me it's really hard to justify the price of buying a house over here even though the neighborhood is cool and obviously all these big houses cost a fortune so it's like yeah you can get something bigger and more modern but you know only if you have the big bucks but it's still nice to come through here and appreciate the area and I don't know if we'll pass by it because like I said I'm not an expert but I remember there was a big mansion here that's been for sale for years probably like five or six years on the market no one bought it needs to be totally restored back to its original glory and nobody ever wanted to buy it probably everybody thinks it's haunted you got a cemetery right here on the left I don't know if you guys can see that but um, anyways I was curious to know if that house is still available or not because with how hot the market is here now you know they're asking 550 grand for this little house 
next door to where I'm staying. And if I remember right, this giant house, which is like the biggest lot, the biggest property for sale in St. Augustine was only around 800 grand. So I'm curious to see if anybody snatched that up. So yeah, we're gonna go in a little circle here. Like I said, I'm not an expert on the area, but I'll try to uh, take you down a different street this time. Plus it's also, you really got to know it well because there's so many little one-way streets like that. So it can be easy to drive in circles accidentally here. But you know, that's why I'm doing this. You know, I never claim to be an expert on anything. I've lived in Florida for a long time, but I'm the kind of person that says you never can know too much, right? So I love learning new things and learning new stuff every day. And being here for a second time has definitely been an eye opener for me because so much has changed in the last two years, really, especially when it comes to the affordability aspect. Also, I just feel like it's more crowded, you know, more people are just living here now, whether it's seasonal or permanent, I'm not really sure, but either way, it's a lot. Seems like there's more people in town. And I was here almost exactly two years ago. So it really wasn't that long ago. I don't remember what the story was with this place on the left, but I think it was like somebody trying to compete with Flagler, building this big fancy hotel and then they went under or something like that. My memory is foggy on that. And there's the famous Flagler College, straight ahead. And I want to say that that house I was telling you guys about, that big haunted mansion, is somewhere down this way, but don't remember for sure. We'll find out soon. I really wanted to come inside this Flagler College because they, it just looks like a beautiful building to visit. It just looks magnificent. And I think they give tours, but I'm only here for two days and then I gotta move on because I got lots of ground to cover. So I'm definitely gonna have to come back again another time. And I'm really gonna be watching the market here too because I'm curious to see what's gonna happen with house prices here because I have a couple of feelings about the area. You know, I think the reason why some of these houses are so expensive is just because there's nobody listing houses for sale. It's not that the house is actually worth as much as they're asking. It's just that there's nothing available. So, you know, supply and demand always takes over. And when there's nothing available, then people pay stupid prices for real estate. And I'm not that stupid, so I'm not going to do that. And luckily for me, coming from Miami, I think is an advantage because I think Miami is a good example to look at of, you know, where St. Augustine could be within the next 10 years or even five years at the way they're going. And that is Miami has already kind of like reached its saturation point with prices. You know, the houses there haven't really gone up in price too much over the past few years. A little bit now since the pandemic, but not much. Oh yeah, nice historical church. And this whole property here, I think is the church on the left. But anyways, what I was saying is the prices there aren't really doubling or anything like that, like they are here in St. Augustine. And I think that there's gonna reach a point here in St. Augustine where people are gonna realize the houses are not worth what they're charging anymore and the, the demand is gonna go way down because there's still a lot of other areas that are cheaper and it's gonna become less desirable once the prices are you know, too high to make any sense. So my 12 years of real estate experience teaches me that that's definitely the case 
and I'm pretty sure St. Augustine's going to reach a breaking point probably soon if they keep going like this. But I do love the area, guys. Even if I don't end up moving here, I would still like to always come back and visit sometimes because it's just a cool little spot, you know? I don't know if it's going to retain that charm or not if it keeps getting busier and busier, but we'll find out. I just hope it's not going to get trashed like what happens in South Beach, you know, where I live. Once too many people know about the area and starts attracting the wrong crowd, things could get weird here quick. This is right where you pick up the trolley over here. The train kind of parks in this parking lot and then they take you away. Actually, I don't remember if it was there or another stop. I think they have different stops where you can hop on and off. We got the wax museum up here on the right. I remember that. I'm gonna go straight just so I can pass by the fort. I don't know if these girls are trying to cross or not. No? Okay. So right up here to the left, I remember that these little pillars here are the original gateways to the city of St. Augustine. So that's been standing here since I think 1565 when this place was first founded. Sorry. It's okay. Straight ahead is the fort. I believe that's also the oldest fort that's still standing in the United States because there's actually a lot of forts like that all over the country most people don't know but um, supposedly that's the oldest one that's still standing here so that's pretty cool that's another thing I've never been inside there we walked around the outside last time but there's actually a lot to do and see here and spending just a couple days in St. Augustine really isn't enough I don't think I could see spending a whole week here to really get a a good taste of what it's like here and also you know doing a bunch of the tourist stuff because it's a fun little town to spend time in and I have to recommend Harry's restaurant I know one of my viewers used to work there I read your comment this morning that's pretty cool this is the second time we were there last night it was packed though guys I think we got there at almost nine o'clock at night and it was still packed and last time we were here it wasn't like that we walked right in got a table no big deal it's just getting insane around here so that's that's what my concern is especially when it comes to you know the area losing its charm because if it just gets too crowded and too busy all the time then i think it would become miserable to live here because this town is small and it's not set up to have a hundred thousand people coming through here every day. And this is one of the main drags here. Actually, things don't look as crazy today as they did yesterday for some reason. Like, this whole restaurant had lines out the sidewalk here and everything. It was pretty crazy. And it's only 5 o'clock and everybody's lining up. It was the same thing yesterday. Just busier. I want to try to find that house I was telling you guys about, but I forgot to look it up on the map before we came over here. So I can't remember where it is. And this Harry's restaurant is right here to the right. Although I kind of feel bad for a lot of these other little restaurants because this Harry's restaurant is probably like the hot spot. 
and everybody's always there. And there's a ton of other little restaurants around here that are probably good too. But everybody just goes to Harry's. But I was lucky enough to get a parking spot right here. And by the way, after 5 p.m., it's free to park, so that's pretty cool. It's kind of the same thing in North Beach where I live. So at least they don't charge you for parking all day long. But this is like the whole little town square here. I just love walking up and down this area. This area right over here to the right, St. George Street. If you come to St. Augustine, you have to walk down there. They have a ton of little cool shops and restaurants and things like that to visit. Very neat. I'm gonna try to find this house just by chance, but I don't know. Bear with me, we'll see. So this time that I was here, I actually spent more time um, exploring like the neighborhoods like where there's houses for sale and all of this and this area you're seeing right here is just actually a small part of St. Augustine guys like St. Augustine is actually pretty big this is the historic district in this small part of town but over where I'm staying is St. Augustine Beach which is a huge island with a ton of real estate over there and beachfront property and then you get this area is very small and then you go west of here which you cross over the river but when you get into the other area of town there's like tons of properties that are far from this area that are new construction but unfortunately a lot of them are like in gated HOA communities and that's just not something I would be interested in buying because nobody's gonna tell me what to do in my own house some people like the HOA houses because it's uniform you have some amenities and you know you're not gonna get too many crazy neighbors but yeah it's just not for me and I think we might get lucky I think I found that house I'm pretty sure it's straight ahead here on the left and it looks like it's still abandoned yep this is it guys coming up here on the left you're gonna see this huge property over here I don't know if it's still for sale but even if it's not they haven't fixed it up yet <laughs> I would actually buy this house right now in St. Augustine because this house is like the biggest lot in the whole city and no one's buying it and maybe they did but for a long time no one did which is kind of strange to me I think a lot of people might be paranoid. A lot of people that live around here probably believe in the ghost stories or whatever. I can't remember the exact story with that house, but I wouldn't be afraid of that. I would totally fix it up if I had the cash. But last time I checked, it was like in the eight or $900,000 price range. So that's out of my range. And plus it probably needs a good few hundred grand to fix it up as well because the place is dilapidated. But even just taking a little walk through this area is pretty cool. Some people say if you do that at nighttime, you'll see ghosts. I did it last time I was here. I didn't see anything. But there is definitely something special about this area that I can't explain. It's hard to put words in it. You just kind of feel it once you're here. I get the same feeling about LA actually. You know, when I'm in LA, I feel like I can feel the energy from all of the movie stars and the rock stars that do live there and have lived there in the past and have went to those same clubs and restaurants that I'm sitting at. Yeah, I feel like you can just pick up that vibe. And I feel the same thing here in St. Augustine, only here it's a little bit different. I guess you're picking up that historical vibe and 
the entire history that this place has to offer. And yeah, it's it's different. It's different than anywhere else I've ever been. Got a senior living community here. It's good they're taking care of their seniors. But all these little houses right now, like everything you're, we're passing by, these little houses are selling for like seven, eight hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand. These are crazy numbers, and those are the small ones. These bigger ones you're seeing, <laughs> double it, you know. And to me, that's nuts, because yeah, the area is great, but those prices don't make sense. In fact, I know not everybody watches these videos or some of my other videos, so I'm gonna tell you guys this in this video and another one, but this house I was looking at for sale next to the Airbnb that I'm staying in, they're asking 550 grand at tops, 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 tops. It's probably only worth maybe 400, maybe 410, something like that, because that's kind of what houses are going for about that size in the neighborhood but they're asking for $550,000 and they want you to waive the appraisal contingency which is just stupid you're basically putting yourself on the hook to buy the house for the full price regardless of whether the bank will give you the loan for that amount which I guarantee you they're not because once they do the appraisal it's going to come back around 385 400 and you're going to be on the hook for the extra 150 grand so I would never do that, and I would never advise any of you to do that either. Only fools do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be the vulture. I'm gonna sit and wait. There will be a correction, even here in St. Augustine, because right now it's having its moment, but at some point, it's going to lose that moment, like everywhere does, and that's when I'll swoop in and buy a place here. Unless I can find something good now, but we'll see. I'm not in a rush, you know? I love Miami too. I love this area, but Miami is great, guys. But I do like being further north like this, mainly because it's cooler. But during the daytime, it's still pretty hot, you know? I'm driving around town here. My, ther my thermometer on my Jeep says 87 degrees, so it's not that cool. But it does cool down at nighttime here quite a bit compared to Miami at least. It's a good 10, 15 degrees cooler a lot of times. You see, there's a lot of places here that really need a lot of help and are in bad shape. So there's a lot of potential inventory to come on the market here, I believe, that, you know, really could be overvalued at the moment. I was looking for the right words to say there. And I'm also simultaneously trying not to crash and actually look around at the same time. <laughs> because it's pretty cool for me to drive through this area too. I hope you guys enjoyed my little unofficial tour of St. Augustine. I know there's probably a lot we missed here, but like I said, guys, I'm not an expert on the area. Just trying to give you a small slice of what it's like here and give you a little piece of the vibe and the history that's present here in St. Augustine, Florida. Check out one of my other driving tours right over here, and I'll see you guys over there.